This is hands down the best LED video spotlight I have ever tested and maybe even used. In this video we're going to see what this light can do, compare it to other popular brands on the market and this iFootage SL60DN can be yours for $189. It's a buy. iFootage has a new range of video LED spotlights on the market called Anglerfish. It consists of three different lights, the SL160DN, the SL1220DN and the SL1320DN and they are all daylight balanced at 5600 Kelvin. I am using the 320 as my key light right now with a 90 centimeter softbox also from iFootage and my rim light, my hair light is the 220DN with a 60 centimeter softbox also from iFootage. And just to let you know how powerful those lights are, the main light is set at 12% while the hair light or rim light is set at only 2.5% because they are so powerful. We're going to talk a little bit more about those other lights at the end of the video. Now a quick disclaimer, iFootage did send me all of these three lights with the softboxes and lanterns. However, I'm not getting any money to make this video, nor do they see this video before it's online. If you go for the $189 package, you will not get this carrying case, then it's going to be at $229. I do recommend paying that extra because this carrying bag is also the best carrying bag that I have ever seen. It's very well padded, so everything inside here is going to be very well protected in case you're on the go. And one detail that I just love are these straps here on the top because so many times when I have been on a shoot, I just need a place to have my tripod. They're usually safe loose on top of the carrying bag but now since we have these straps I can take the carrying bag and the tripod which is now very secure on top of the carrying case. Now apart from the light fixture you get a reflector which is actually quite good. The power cable which is five meters long and the power adapter which is two meters long so with total cable length of seven meters which is quite unusual. Also on the power brick there is a metal or aluminum strap if you like so you can hang it on a light stand in case you don't want to have it on the floor or that it keeps on dangling which we don't want. There's also a light stand adapter included so that you can connect your 60DN basically anywhere. Now let's see how this little 60DN light will perform. I'm going to swap it out with my main key light here and use a couple of different soft boxes and lanterns so you can see what you can do with this little light. Now I have connected the 60DN with a 60 centimeter softbox. The intensity is for the moment set at about 30%. It's exactly in the same position as the bigger 320DN was. However, we can turn it up a little bit, 100, and you can see that it should be bright enough. It's actually a bit too bright. Let me turn it down just a little bit. Let's leave it at 65% more or less. This 60 centimeter softbox has also got a grid on it. So it really makes the light go towards me. It doesn't spread too much in the rest of the room. I think it's lighting me surprisingly well actually. So this could be a perfect setup for your YouTube channel. Or maybe if you do talking head interviews or something like that. Let's add the big softbox. So here you see the light with the 90 centimeter softbox. It's still at the same intensity, about 65%, and we can make it as high as we want, 200. Obviously with a bigger softbox, you can light a bigger surface. Maybe you have someone standing, then the bigger softbox might be the solution that you need. Now let's see what happens when we connect a lantern instead of a softbox, because as mentioned, the softbox directs the light a little bit better than a lantern. A lantern, however, will spread the light more in the room. Here we are with the small lantern from iFootage. And as you can see, the whole room becomes a little bit brighter. Now this might be good if you are doing, for example, a cooking show or that you are showing a product in a way that you need to have everything lit a little bit better. And I think we can even turn the brightness down a bit. Now it's at 100%. Let's put it down to 
60 where we used to have it before as well and I think that's also good to go. They also have a bigger lantern. The effect is gonna be the same. However, as with the bigger softbox, you can light a bigger surface using the big lantern. Compared to the lantern, the softboxes has a double diffusion, so the light you get is very soft, hence the word softbox. The lantern has no double diffusion, so it makes the light a little bit harder, nice and soft, nice and even, and the output is going to be a little bit higher compared to if you are using a double diffused softbox. It's a very lightweight light. It's only 760 grams and it's mostly metal and hard plastic. The mount on this 60DN is a mini Bowens mount where you can connect the included reflector. You can also get yourself the mini balance to standard balance mount adapter. And this was the one I used when I connected the soft boxes and lanterns to the light. There is no umbrella option on the light, so you can't connect an umbrella to it. However, I do prefer using soft boxes in general, so that's not going to be an issue. And another cool detail that I like is that you have this lever. Let's say that you want to pack it and you tighten it and it's stuck down there. No problem because you have the possibility of pulling it out a bit and decide where you want it to be locked. So it will never take more space in your carrying bag or backpack. There are two dials on the back of the light, one for dimming it and one for controlling the settings on the light. The LED screen is nice and bright. You can see it from whatever angle you are turning it. There are different ways in adjusting the brightness of the light. You can basically just turn it like any normal light. The faster you turn it, the faster it will be brighter or dimmer. And if you go slowly, it goes in increments of 0.1%. So you can really hone in exactly the brightness that you need. Furthermore, if you press the dimmer button, you go in increments of 20% from 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100, and back to zero again. You have the possibility in adjusting the curve in how the light goes up or down in brightness. I usually leave it on linear. And you can also control the fan mode, automatic, ultra quiet or quiet. We're gonna talk about the fan noise it makes at the very end of the video. But a spoiler, it's not noisy at all. You can easily connect it to your phone and control the lights using the app from iFootage. I have connected all the three lights to this app and I can switch them all off if I want to. On. And if you see here on the 220DN, on the little cog there, there is a red button. That means that there's an update available. There you go, we press updates. There was actually an update on the 60DN today, and that included a studio mode, which means that you can control the lights with a main switch so that the next time you come into your office or your YouTube studio, you can switch on the main switch for all the lights and they're all gonna turn on and have the same set as you used last time. Let's have a quick look at the effects included in the 60DN. We have fireworks, lightning, paparazzi, welding, strobe, explosion, pulsing, 40 bulb, and that's it. You can also control the intensity and the frequency of the effects in case you need to control that as well. That was the update done. You can also power the iFootage 60DN with batteries. You can purchase this V-mount pistol grip adapter. So this is very handy if you are shooting exterior shots or for whatever reason you don't have access to a normal socket in the wall. You can even power the light with a USB power bank. However, you need between 80 and 100 watts to do that. So you won't be able to do that with, for example, your iPhone charger. There's even a possibility of powering this light with the F970 batteries. So you're covered in however way you want to power this light. It's a very bright little light. The size is exceptionally small. And the most important maybe is that the CRI is exceptionally high. And what this means is that your skin tone and other colors in general is gonna have a very natural and real 
look to them. There are cheaper lights out there, even more expensive lights, where the color accuracy is not that high. Colors in general will look just a little bit off. So with this guy, you know that the colors will look very, very natural. Even though its name is 60DN, this is a 70 watt light. So it's 10 watts more than many of the competitors out there. It's a very bright light. 12,200 lux one meter away using the reflector, about 3,000 lux. Very powerful light for being this small and quiet. This guy makes next to no noise at all. And as mentioned earlier, you can control the fan mode. We go to the menu, we go to fan automatic. Now it's set at 90% more or less. And on the back of the LED screen, you can actually see the RPMs of the fan. Right now it says 240 rounds per minute, which is not too bad. I cannot hear anything. The microphone is right there. maybe something but i mean the microphone will not pick it up and that's something which is the same for all of these lights that the fan mode is very intelligent and they make basically no sound my studio now is very quiet if we change it to uqd which i expect to stand for ultra quiet d the max brightness will be 25 percent if we turn it to the next fan mode which is quiet I can now go from 0 to 50%, not higher. If I now choose to go in increments again, pressing the dimmer button, going to 60, the fan has been automatically set to automatic. And if you get yourself a cheaper light, like the Godox SL60W, the fan noise will be louder. If sound is crucial to your videos, then there's no doubt you have to go for something like the iFootage SL60DM. But when would you need a stronger light like the SL320 or the SL220? That can come down to what you expect to mount on the light. If you want to have really big soft boxes, you're probably better off going for one of these stronger lights because the mounting system is a little bit better. They can handle more weights. And of course they are much brighter so you can use them on bigger sets. And they're also great for slow motion. I'm going to review the other two lights soon, so if this interests you, consider subscribing. If you like this video, please say thank you by giving it a thumbs up. Peace.